Recently, I showed how someone could use the Routerize built-in tool, Traffic Generator, to execute a CDP flood attack. And we successfully rebooted one of our small and affordable home routers, the HAP AC squared. And it raised two good questions. Is this a RouterOS vulnerability? And can we prevent such attacks? The quick answers are no and yes. Let's examine this in more detail. Flooding a system with CDP or other neighbor discovery packets like MNDP is a form of a DOS attack and in general it is bad in itself as there is no way to defend against your device receiving packets that are useless. Your device still has to look at them one by one and make a decision whether to drop or not. At the very least, it needs to look at the MAC destination address, so regardless of any firewalls or bridge rules, there is a small amount of processing that has to take place. And in the case of the CDP attack, however, things are noticeably worse, because the device is reading the whole contents of those packets and then updating the neighbor discovery table. In the case of the CDP attack, however, things are noticeably worse, because the device is reading the whole contents of those packets and then updating the neighbor discovery table, which consumes both RAM and CPU resources. So what we can do is disable neighbor discovery, which will reduce the impact back to that of a very basic DOS attack. Routerized devices will actually have neighbor discovery disabled by default on any WAN interfaces, so you don't have to worry about your internet port, for example. To manually configure whether to use neighbor discovery or not, go to IP neighbor discovery settings section. There you could disable discovery completely by setting the discover interface list property to none. I will now run the exact same attack that I did before on this HAP AC squared, but this time with the neighbor discovery disabled and we'll see what happens. This time around we can see that the overall CPU usage is around 20% and one CPU core is used at around 80%. So there is still an effect on this little HAP AC squared but it is not enough to reboot it. If we ran the same attack against this HAP AX squared, the CPU usage would be even lower. If you start moving up our product range, you quickly find that as long as those devices are properly configured, they are essentially invulnerable to this type of flood attacks. Not because they have more powerful CPUs, which they do, but because they have switch chips that are extremely efficient at layer 2 processing. But even though the devices are not affected themselves, that doesn't mean that the attack won't be successful because it is still possible to exhaust the available bandwidth on a given link, effectively denying legitimate traffic. Let's think about limiting the attack surface for layer 2 DOS attacks. This type of attack should never be coming from your internet port, because that would mean that either your ISP is compromised or someone is in the middle between you and your ISP. And in that case, you probably got bigger worries. So that leaves us with attacks coming from within our local network. I can't talk about your end devices, but if someone gains access to a MicroTik router in your local network, they could use basic traffic generator functionality to spew out large volume of useless traffic. They don't even have to do any packet injection or have access to any other hacking tools. Let's try a simple attack using Traffic Generator. I'm simply going to change the MAC destination address to be that of my HAP AC squared. Let's see what happens to our HAP AC. And just like that, we have exhausted the one gigabit bandwidth capacity and one of the CPU cores in the HAP AC squared is sitting at 100%. So it's not too difficult to imagine how we could disrupt networks just with this basic traffic generation functionality. 
Now that we know this is a dangerous tool in the wrong hands, how can we prevent malicious usage? Well, we can simply go to system device mode and type update traffic gen equals no, and then either hold the reset button or briefly unplug your device. After doing this, the traffic generator functionality will be disabled on this device and re-enabling it will require physical access. Our devices come with great capabilities that give you freedom and flexibility, but sometimes those same capabilities could be exploited by a malicious party. For most people, the traffic generator and neighbor discovery within a local network are great features that will do no harm. But in higher security environments where you operate from the principle of least privilege, those two features should get disabled.